Hundreds of years ago, a bunch of Native Americans discovered a large canyon bordering what is now known as the Las Vegas Valley. What was special about this canyon was that throughout the area, there were deeply red colored rocks that were spread out in different locations. Because of all these unique rocks, they officially named it the Red Rock Canyon. After the discovery, six different Native American cultures were made. Uh, that's not what we're talking about. Wait, what? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Red Rock Resort, located in Summerlin. Oh, uh... Well, let's just roll the intro. In 1952, a guy by the name of Howard Hughes decided to purchase a total of 25,000 acres of land near the Spring Valley in southern Nevada in the hopes of relocating his own company to the state. However, due to different problems, his hopes were diminished. Later on, after his death in 1976, his company, which is now known as the Summer Corporation, had noted that the acres of land he previously purchased had some serious opportunities due to its large size. So for this, they had announced in 1988 that they would begin developing an all-new housing area that would be named Summerlin, named after Hughes' grandmother, Jean Amelia Summerlin. By the beginning of 1990, the first houses, schools, and businesses were opening up, along with its first neighborhood community, The Hills. Its first major park, The Hills Park, would also be completed in the same year. Many different families came over to live in the new area, along with high praise from its so-called luxurious houses and apartment complexes. Summer Corporation, which was known as the Howard Hughes Corporation, would begin to see success in the new area, and in 1992, it was ranked as number one in the Arthur Anderson Real Estate Services Group's new home sales. Because of this, the Hughes Corporation began expanding with churches, libraries, hospitals, more parks, and more recreational areas in general. By the 2000s, Summerlin had already become one of the most popular communities in the Las Vegas Valley. It had begun expanding to new smaller communities including Summerlin South, Sun City, Siena, and Summerlin North. It had everything a person would need, essential and non-essential. And of course, it also had casinos, including the resort at Summerlin, now Rampart Casino which opened in 1999, and one year later in 2000, Boyd Gaming's Suncoast Hotel and Casino. For a little while, those were the only major casinos that existed in Summerlin, but that would be cut short. On October 9th, 2003, Station Casinos, who had previously owned many other casinos near Summerlin, such as the Fiesta Rancho, Texas Station, and Santa Fe Station, had announced that it had made a deal with the Howard Hughes Company and would be building an all-new 1,000-room hotel and casino located on Charleston Boulevard in Summerlin. Described as a new modern-themed hotel and casino with a desert ambience, the new casino would be named Red Rock Station, named after the Red Rock Canyon, which is where it would be located near. The plans included a 90,000 square foot casino, a reflecting pool, 500 timeshare units, a movie theater and amphitheater, and an 82,000 square foot meeting center. While the idea of the resort seemed cool, residents of Summerlin and the nearby Red Rock Canyon were appalled. The problem with Red Rock Station was that it was located right in front of where the entrance to the Canyons National Park was located, not to mention blocking the view of Red Rock Canyon for anyone who was in front of the resort's project. Even worse, the plan called for a 23-story hotel tower, which would only make the previous problems worse. Either way, construction broke ground on April 15, 2004 with a predicted cost of $400 million. The resort, which would mostly cater towards the locals, was originally going to open in 2005. Summerlin residents were still opposing. At this point, they began complaining on newspapers and other media. It was clear that more people were actually against the idea of a hotel and casino like this in Summerlin than people who actually wanted it there. So how did Station Casinos react to all this? Well, in probably the most savage move I think Station Casinos has ever done, they decided to expand the property during construction with new casino space and an expanded hotel tower, bringing the room count from 450 to 850 rooms, along with increasing the cost of the resort to $800 million, officially making the resort, which was now known as Red Rock Resort Spa and Casino, to become the most expensive hotel and casino in Las Vegas that catered to locals. 
It was also a note that Red Rock Resort would be the first station casino's property to not have a station in its name. During construction of the property, two 227-foot condominium towers were also planned adjacent to the resort that were named the Red Rock Residences and the Residences at Red Rock. In order to build them, they teamed up with Stephen Molaski and Stephen Klubeck of Klubeck Molaski Partners LLC, who would also partially own it. Each building would have contained a total of 300 units, which would equal to 600 units total. However, due to financial troubles with the two companies, Station Casinos would basically kick the Klubeck Petrins company out of development and would resume the project on their own. Even then, financial problems continued to plague the project, and thus the condominiums were cancelled. After a couple of design changes and the extreme opposition of the resort slowly disappearing, Red Rock officially opened for business on April 18, 2006 at a cost of a whopping $926 million. A six-minute fireworks show was held during the opening, along with popular Grammy Award-winning singer Sting holding a one-hour-long concert within the resort's pool. Also attending the opening was former Nevada Governor Richard Bryan and Andre Grassi, along with 3,800 special guests. Red Rock Resort featured several different things that station casinos would usually put inside of their own hotel casinos. The Feast Buffet was part of Red Rock's multiple dining options, along with the Grand Cafe. Kids Quest, a play area designed for kids, was also located inside of the casino. However, there are also some new and original stuff that would make the resort very different from the other station casinos' properties. Its pool, named the Cherry Pool, was a large circular pool containing a fountain in the middle and a long, more shallow area on the edge, hence the name Cherry Pool. Because of its quite creative and relaxing look, it was considered one of Station Casino's best pool. Some of the dining options not only included the Feast Buffet and the Grand Cafe, but also stuff like T-Bone's Chop House, Cabo Mexican Restaurant, The Hachi, and Terra Rosa. There was also a 16-screen Regal Cinemas movie theater, which was considered a focal point in the resort. The casino in general featured different chandeliers inspired by past casinos, such as the Desert Inn and Sands, along with glass-blown sculptures and a desert motif. Despite all of the opposition residents had during construction, Red Rock was a success, garnering $44 million by the end of its first year. Visitors praised its luxurious ambience, pools, and hotel rooms, along with its modernistic theme. Because of the newfound popularity and success, the resort began its first expansion one year later on January of 2007, with the addition of the $31 million Red Rock Lanes, a 76-lane bowling alley that contained a bar along with an expanded parking garage and spa, all costing over $65 million. To keep up with the grand opening of the nearby downtown Summerlin in 2014, the resort began a $35 million expansion. This time, two new restaurants opened right along the edge of the west side of the casino, named the Yard House and Lucille Steakhouse, all within a quote-unquote restaurant row. Finally, in 2016, the Red Rock would be the headquarters for Stage Casino's new holding company, Red Rock Resorts which would later go public on the National Nasdaq Stock Exchange. This would also make Red Rock become Station Casino's flagship resort. Today, Red Rock Resort is considered to be Station Casino's nicest hotel and casino, bringing in the luxury to its locals inside Summerlin. Even though it had a rocket construction history with its intense opposition, Red Rock still manages to be a great addition to Summerlin. Hey, thanks for letting me come here. I love what you did with this place. Yeah, I like to keep it clean most of the time. Say, maybe you can start inviting other people into your room. This way you can get more people to talk about the history of these places. Oh, really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. can have it all at Red Rock Casino. Fine steaks, fresh sushi, the valley's best buffet, loose slots, friendly table.